Okay guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be building the uh, back cabinets for a bar in a basement that we're doing. This is gonna be the back half against the wall. It's gonna have a sink. If you're wondering why there's a hole in the side of that cabinet right there, uh, stick around and I'll explain everything. All right, let's get started. All right, everybody, before we get started, I just wanna show you what's going on here. So you can see that my shop runs all the way along to the front of the house. I tap into the garage, breaking down that wall. I built that platform extension so that I could get more tools there, level with the garage. Broke down that wall, came into the basement, and now we have the long portion of the basement. But this is very narrow. So I want to turn your attention to this side of the unused part of the basement. And you'll notice that I took down those sliding barn doors that I had there so I can get some more room. This is an unused part of the basement now, so I'm going to be tapping into this so I can start breaking down my big sheets of plywood and doing my assembly over here in this portion. So let me bring the camera over here so you can see what's going on, so you can see how we can start to manipulate this. Okay, so I built this wall a few years back to separate the shop from this portion of the basement because at the time we were somewhat using it, but now we're not using it at all. So eventually I'm gonna take that wall down, but for right now, I think I have enough space to throw the full sheets of plywood here on the STM, break it down, do my cross cutting in there, and then my assembly in here in this portion. So let's get started. So we get started using the STM to break down the plywood in this section of the basement. Uh, probably gonna get rid of that couch in the next few days, get that out of my way, because we're not using it, that is broken. And now, like with all my other cabinet builds, I'll start by breaking down the 4x8 sheets of plywood. I'm using 3 quarter inch red oak, or 18 millimeter in this case. And uh, the STM1800 is a great tool for breaking down plywood, and Festool just put it permanently in their lineup. So it is a great purchase. Remember, I'm not sponsored. I'm just letting you know this is a great tool. I'm sure you guys remember that I don't have a table saw in my shop currently, and I don't plan on getting one really anytime soon. So I'm using the track saw with the parallel guides. This is a great way to get consistent rips if you don't have a table saw. Table saws take up a lot of room, so I have a limited space. So this helps a lot. Now, when you're making any type of cabinets, you want to make sure that you're making consistent rips for all your parts when you're breaking all the sheet goods down. This is just going to help you later on when you assemble things. Everything's going to be the exact same size that you need. It's going to make things a lot easier and everything is going to be perfect. The next part of the process is the cross cutting of the sheet goods. And what I'm doing is breaking them down on my MFT3. And this is the main part of the shop you guys are familiar with. And I break these down uh, at the same time using a stop block. So first I'll cut a square edge on one piece, flip it over, hit the stop block, and they make my repetitive cuts. The main point is consistency is key when building cabinets. Once I have my measurement for the height of the sides, um, and then these are going to have an external toe kick once again on these cabinets. Uh, so I'm just going to go to town cross cutting all my parts and then I'm going to stack them up, mark them off, and then I can move on to the next order of business. Which I think you guys are going to find uh, really interesting because I had to purchase a new tool since I do this uh, quite often. Uh, this next tool is saving me a ton of time. Heavy purchase, but uh, it was definitely worth it in the long run. So make sure you guys stick around for the next couple of seconds and uh, you'll see that new tool. I like to mark my boards after I cut them and stack them up. So this way when I move them around, I don't forget which parts they are. So now I'm just moving uh, my pre-cut parts, those are the external toe kicks, I'm moving those to the other side of the shop and stacking them up and I'm really utilizing this extra space and really liking and digging this new part of the shop. I can really get used to this. Can't wait till that wall comes down. Okay, well it's time for that new tool I was telling you about. So uh, I do a lot of edge banding, uh, cabinetry, built-ins, uh, custom bars, things like that has become pretty much a staple in my actual carpentry diet here. I've become kind of a specialist in this and I went from doing uh, finished carpentry uh, which was consisting of mainly moldings to a lot of custom cabinetry and built-ins. So I used to do this all with an iron and it took me all day to edge band the panels. So this here is the Festool Contouro which is a very expensive edge banding machine which now just takes me minutes to do what used to take me all day to do. So now unless you're doing this like me professionally, don't go out and buy an edge banding machine. They're a lot of money. 
But what I do when I need a tool like this, and it's very expensive, I put a little bit of the profits aside from each job, and when I get enough money set aside, then I purchase the tool. Once the edge banding is all done, I'll use my flush trim router to flush up the edge banding to the plywood panel and make it look like a solid piece of wood. And here I am again, stacking those panels in some new found shop space. Oh, did I mention I got rid of that couch, and since now I have more room in the other side of the shop, I had to get the edge banding table, right? It's the small pieces, they're just too small to do it with a handheld unit alone. There's no way to clamp it down. So, sometimes you just gotta buy new tools. Okay, so this is where the job gets interesting here. So, it's time to explain the hole in the side of the cabinet. So basically this cutout here that I'm doing in the center of the end panel is going to be made for access to a steam unit that uh, the clients have in the basement. I'm making this cutout for them to be able to access the side of the steam unit. I'm going to be using the guide stop on the guide rail for the track saw and what this does is it holds the back of the track saw plate down when you're plunging into a piece of wood so it doesn't kick back on you. It also gives you a repeatable starting point for where you're going to plunge in the track saw. And now I'll just make the cut using the track saw with the guidelines on the track plate to tell me where the blade is going to stop. And I'll stay well away from the corners and finish it off with a jigsaw. Now to finish off the corners and complete the cut, I'm going to use the jigsaw. Now if you don't feel comfortable using a jigsaw, you can simply use a pole saw or any hand saw that you have. Just make sure that you follow the line and make sure that you have some support under the middle of the piece like I have it on the MFT, just so it doesn't drop out on you and come crashing to the floor. And there you go, perfect cutout. All you got to do is take the clamps off and pick up the outer frame and then you can use the inside for maybe some draw parts. And now it's time for assembly. So uh, I'm using dominoes here uh, to pre-assemble and it's just an easier way for alignment. They add some strength and everything, but uh, you don't have to do that. I'm going to just put the dominoes in there with some glue and bang this thing together and then hit it with some staples to hold it in place using a narrow crown stapler. And then I finish it off with some screws. And that's because these are going to be um, screwed together with other cabinets. So all these fasteners will be hidden. Next, I'll attach the other side and then move on to the spanners and nailers. I like to use a clamp on the top of the, the side panels and just give it some light pressure. And that'll hold the stretchers or the spanners in place while I fix them into the position they need to be while I nail them off and then put the screws in. After the top spanners or stretchers are nailed and screwed off, I'll flip the cabinet around and I'll install the rear nailer board. And this is going to be what allows me to screw the cabinets to the wall. Okay guys, so this is going to be the cabinet that has the sink in it, right? So basically what I need to do is I need to turn it upside down. You can say I got it on its side because I have a false panel going in front under the sink. It's going to have a, a false front that's going to look like a drawer, like pretty much every sink in every kitchen has. So this has to sit just about, you know, somewhere around here. That's going to be the same size as the other drawers. But you have to use a spacer to get that consistent reveal. So I'm going to use both of these partition pieces as my spacer so I know that I'm going to have the consistent width for the um, the full straw panel. So I'm just going to take these and I'm just going to push them up against the sides and push them down towards the, the spanners so that I can clamp them in place and they won't move. Okay, consistent spacing. Now I have my false front. And what I'm going to do is just give it a little nudge and that'll go in just like that. Okay, I can draw some screws. This side here, those are my P 
pieces that I'm going to be using later in the other cabinets. So now you can see we have the consistent spacing and when we put our full straw front in there. I can also put a small piece in here and that will take up the gap. Uh, that's going to keep it even, but at the same time, since I'm making a false draw front, that's going to be screwed in also from the back. So just a couple of glue blocks in here, I won't have to worry about it. Could use pocket screws too if you want. Right, so basically these glue blocks, they're glued in and stapled from the sides and they're pre-drilled in the center. And then when that false drawer front goes on, right from the back of the unit before I even install it or even after I install it, I can just come in from underneath, run the screw right in and pull the false drawer front in place. So the best part about this is you can just use scrap blocks that you have from, you know, cutoffs of other projects and things like that. So you're really not, uh, you know, wasting any material. Once the drawer front goes in, run the screw right from the back, put your drawer in place, clamp it to the unit, and then just run the screw, and that's it. That's all she wrote. Then if it ever needs to be taken out for access for any reason, it could just be unscrewed and pulled off as a normal drawer front. Okay, so this is the cabinet with the hole in it on the side, obviously, for that steam unit. So it has no bottom, just a spanner and access from the side, which is going to be covered up with a false panel that has magnets. So basically, it'll be a nice end panel to finish off the cabinet. And then when they need access to it, not only do they have access by opening the doors and working on the front of the unit or to remove it, but if they need to get in the side for just any quick reason or get to the wiring or the actual, uh, it has a... Um, water valve coming out of the wall that's attached to it, well, they can do all of that from the side. So they'll just pop off that panel, do what they gotta do, open the doors, if they need to remove it, they can remove it, and that's it. We're gonna have a drawer on one side, open shelf on the other, on both end units. I'm using these now, um, I use them as a spacer to get the correct spacing. Well, now I need to put them in the center to actually be a divider so that I can start making the drawers. So what I've done is mark off the center of the cabinet, drop down the line on both the top and the bottom, made a mark on the center. I wrote, this red oak plywood is 18 millimeters. So half of 18 is nine, so I got my center mark with nine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of line it up here like this, right? Now you can see if I was to put this on the ends, it would be tight in there, but because there's bows in the plywood and there's nothing holding it down, there's a little bit of flex there. So that's also going to take up the gap when I attach this with fasteners. So I'm just gonna line up my mark here. Now I want this to be square all the way back, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring my square up to it and I can see that the back is out. So I'm gonna keep my mark where it is and I'm just gonna move the back of the divider and then make sure I'm lined up with the front where my mark is just drive one staple through the bottom here to keep the front in place. Okay, do the same to the back. Do the same for the top. Put it in place. Perfectly square. Beautiful, all the way back. And that's gonna help in the process of when I make the drawers, installing the drawer slides and the drawers themselves. Everything will be perfectly aligned that way. Okay guys, so we got the base cabinets for the back of the bar, which is gonna be up against the wall with the sink. We got that part done now. The next video, I wanna be working on the doors and the drawers, but uh, in particular, they are gonna be just slab doors. They're gonna be um, kind of like a Euro style uh, kitchen. You would have a solid panel door, but with just a groove routed around the outer perimeter of the door to give it a little uh, design flip. So I figured I'd do a whole separate video on that. And I'll also show you how to install those, uh, the hinges for the frameless uh, cabinets as well, because that's what these are, Euro style, they're frameless and the doors uh, are gonna be uh, edge banded because there'll be a solid sheet of ply. So that's gonna be a pretty cool video. Uh, I hope you like the little trick with the uh, side there to how to cut out the center panel. Uh, during the installation video, I'll show you guys how that access is going to work with that steam unit right there and how we're going to install it over that steam unit. So stay tuned for the installation video as well. All right, so I've uh, got a couple of things to do, doors, drawers, and the finish. 
pretty sure it's going to be a semi-transparent black stain. That's what the client wants. It's going with a really dark theme, old school, uh, really dark, uh, speakeasy type of bar. So it's going to be cool. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the picture of a notification bell. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hope you guys learned something here on building these cabinets. And uh, check the description box for the tools that I use. I'll have links in those. All right. And I will see you next time in the shop when we do the doors.